Hello, ladies and gentlemen. What we have here is the 4506T form. Uh, the first thing I do want to go over with you on this is the SBA requires that you complete the IRS form 4506T as part of your disaster loan application submission. Um, the form authorizes the IRS to provide federal income information directly to the SBA. And although the form can be completed online, get this people, because it's very important. It's a mistake that many have made and have to redo. But because although the form can be completed online, you must print and sign the form, then submit it to the SBA. Okay, the IRS 4506T must be completed and submitted with each SBA loan application, even if you're not required to file a federal income tax return. So here's the deal is even though I'm going to be showing you these uh, online download PDF tutorials, you're still going to need to download it. After you're finished, you're going to need to download it and sign the form and then submit the completed documents to, you can either fax it to 202-481-1505 or you can email it to capital E-L-A-D-O-C at sba.gov or you can physically mail, paper mail it to U.S. Small Business Administration Processing and Disbursement Center, Attention E-L-A Mail Department. P.O. Box 156119, Fort Worth, Texas, 7615. Now that you have that information, let's go over the documents. And remember, you will need to submit the form in one of those three manners after you're done uploading it. Enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Also, the links for these forms and instructions will be provided in the description down below. All right, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you out there who have uh, been going for your second round of idle loan, we may have to fill out this 4506T form. Uh, they may call for it. They may not. More than likely, it's part of the deal. It's part of the package. The majority of us have to fill this out. So here we go. I'm going to give you a little uh, insight on how we're going to go about doing that. Here's a little tutorial for the 4506 since I noticed there were no... Uh, recent ones out there. So on 1A, first thing we're going to do is uh, name shown on the tax return of a joint return. Enter the name shown first. We'll do John Doe Plumbing. Okay. For a social security number on tax return or a tax EIM number. So say you used your tax return. Say you're a social, sole proprietor. 555555555. Okay. So you got that. If a joint return Enter spouse's name shown on tax return, not John Doe's wife. In case uh, you did it with uh, your wife. If not, just leave this blank. And her social, which is 555-554. Current name, address, number. Okay, so we're going to do 123... Main Street. That is your current name or address. Okay, previous address shown on the last return filed. If different from line three, no, mine's not the, th mine's the same. So if yours is different, type that here. Five A. If the transcript or tax information is to be mailed to a third party, such as mortgage company, enter the third party's name, address, and telephone number. Okay, here, <clears throat> this is where you're going to have to have, you're going to put U.S. Small Business Administration Office of Disaster Assistance. So this is going to them. So you would want to put the SBA. Okay, so write that into your into your uh, form. Okay, 5B, uh, customer file number. If applicable, see, if applicable, see instructions. Um, nope. It's not applicable for us. Uh, we're going to do uh, section 1 through 4, 6, 6B and C, 9, attestation, signature, date, and title. So we're not going to do 5B. Okay, the transcript requested. Enter the tax form here. 
1060, 1065, and app. Okay, I did 1099. Okay, and here you're going to enter uh, the tax transcript you filed in section six. If this request is for an individual, an, an, an individual, enter 1040. If it's for a business, enter the business tax return you filed uh, for the year, not quarterly returns. Examples might be uh, like a 1065, uh, an 1120, a 990, a 1041, etc. I had a 1099, so I'm going to put that there. And then uh, for for tax form 990 or 1041, check box 6B. That's this one. If you had that one, uh, check box 6B. For all other boxes, check 6C. Okay. And if, if that's the one we got to check here, we got to make sure this box is checked. Okay. Next. Now for tax form 990 or 1041, uh, check box 6B. And for all others, check 6 If the authorization is for an individual, include the two most recent years of tax return was filed. If the authorization is for a business, include the most recent three years tax return is filed. So that's going to be most of us here. Uh, we're businesses. So you're going to put the last three years. So 1231, 219, 1231, 218, 1231, 2017. Okay, got that. So do the last three years, including the end of the fiscal year of the business format is a uh, month and month, day and year for all authorizations. Uh, form 4506 must be signed and dated by the taxpayer down here listed on line 1A up here or 2A. So you got to be signed up here now uh, on 1A or 2A. If you filed a joint return, tax return, only one filer is required to sign. So you must check the box in the signature area. Signature attests that he or she, uh, in his clause of reading, it declares that he or she is authority. So you got to check that box there. And then your signature is going to be here. And it's going to be an electronic signature, so you're just going to sign that. If you filed a joint return, only one filer is required to sign. You must sign. You must check the box in the signature area to acknowledge that you have the authority to sign and uh, request the information. The form will not be processed and returned to you if this box is unchecked. It's a very important box here, people. Okay. So then we go over here and we enter the telephone number of the first or second filer in the area. So I uh, put your number here. There's that. Enter your name here. The signer title down here. If the authorize, if the authorization here is for a business, the signer uh, has to be authorized to request the tax transcript. Uh, examples of authorized representatives of a business might be like a president, secretary, treasurer, owner, chief financial officer, manager, partner, stuff like that. Just uh, your signatures need to be here. So you got that and you got that. You sign all that, bada bing, bada boom. John Doe. Okay, and then you would date it, etc. There we go. It's very simple. We've just filled out a 4506T form. Hopefully that helps. Uh, if you have any more questions, please like and subscribe and ask away. I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Have a blessed night.